Okay, I'm gonna land right out. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm being super s No! Oh no 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 oh I'm so bad. I'm also not even really playing this game. I recorded this months ago. These aren't plugged in, but let's talk about that text effect. This sort of shaky text effect is one you see around quite a bit. I think it really became popular following the success of Stone Mountain 64's YOLO on the Battlefield series. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this effect inside DaVinci Resolve, how to create a preset so that you save time anytime you want to repeat the effect. And then I'm going to give away some presets I've made so that you can use them in your videos. So here I am inside DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. If you navigate up to effects library titles, you'll see that we have two main options for how to get text into our video. The default text effect will give you some control, but the text plus effect brings with it the full power of the fusion page, which we will need for the shake effect. So I'm going to drag that text plus effect right onto my timeline. And then you will see right in the middle of our screen, we have the default text. And then over in the inspector, we have all the different controls for that text, the color, the font, what the text says, and more. Now, if you didn't know any better, your first instinct might be to create that shake by hand. So you would go into the controls for something like rotation. You would look at rotation on the z-axis and think, yes, I want my text to shake on the z-axis. So you would start keyframing. You would click this triangle. You would move a few frames. You would change that value, move them more frames, change the value, move them more frames. And you could do this all the way down your effect. And then if you watched it back, you would see, yes, that title is shaking on that Z axis. And while theoretically this could give you more control over the effect, it would take way too long. And if you wanted to change any of the values after the fact, it would be a massive headache. Well, you got dumb brain? So I'm going to delete that text plus effect, drag in a brand new effect, and navigate to that same rotation control. And I'm going to right click and select modify with shake. And then if you scrub over your timeline, you will see the faintest little shake on that Z axis rotation. For reference, I am also going to go to the center position for this title, right click and go to modify shake. And you will see it is a much more dramatic effect on this position data. But over time, both the X and Y axis position are wiggling, are shaking, and are moving your title around the screen in a random manner. But I'm going to right click again on center and go to remove shake to and reset this position data to 0.5 on the X and 0.5 on the Y to get it back in the center. So we still have that very subtle rotation on the X axis, but we don't have any control over the effect. If you click on your text plus layer and open the fusion page, you will see that layer has become a node over here. And in the inspector, you still have all of those same controls from the inspector that you had in the edit page, but you will also see that at the top of the inspector next to tools, you have a modifiers page. And if you open that, you will see the shake modifier we added to that Z axis rotation. Double click on that and you will see the controls for that modifier. Notice that by default, whenever you add a modifier to any value, it will add a shake between the values of zero at a minimum and one at a maximum. That is why the shake was much more prevalent on that center position data than the rotation data. So by default, this shake we added is only shaking back and forth one degree. Because we are talking about rotation, we know that 360 degrees is one complete rotation. But if we grab this slider, you will see that we cannot move this slider past zero or one, but we can manually input values into this box. So for a minimum, I'm going to put in negative 15. For a maximum, I'm going to put in 15. That'll be a negative 15 degrees and 15 degrees or a 30 degree arc. And then if we scrub our timeline, you will see that indeed that title is moving back and forth between an approximate 15 degrees and negative 15 degrees. But you'll probably also realize that this isn't really shaking, it's more rocking. And that is because of this smoothness control. By default, it is at 10, and you can ramp that up to really make this text smooth over the course of your timeline, or you can pull it down 
to create a much jerkier shake effect. This smoothness control is really powerful without changing your minimum or maximum value, you can drastically change the look by deciding how quickly you want to move between those two values. The other tip to make this effect look better is back in the tools control, if you navigate all the way over to the settings panel on the right, you will see that you have motion blur controls. If you enable that on, it'll add motion blur and then you also have a set of controls for that motion blur. I generally like to crank quality up to about six, but these are controls you can mess with. And you should know that while motion blur can make a lot of effects look better, the processing of the motion blur can be quite taxing on machines. So you can either disable motion blur while you're working and enable it for export, or if it's too taxing, you can disable motion blur altogether. But back in the controls for that shake modifier, you will see that we also have a random seed control. This control exists because when you add a shake modifier, you are pretty much asking the computer to think for itself. You are giving it a minimum and a maximum value and you are telling the computer, you figure it out, wiggle between these. When you click this reseed control, you will see that this random seed value jumps all over this slider and that it is also affecting the position of your title on that Z rotation. It is accomplishing this without changing any of your smoothness, minimum or maximum settings. If you like the general look of your effect, but for whatever reason want it to look different at a specific point in time, click this reseed button and see what the computer comes up with. If you navigate back to your edit window, you will see that all the changes we made to that shake modifier carry back over to the edit window. And then we can begin changing and working with that title as normal. You can even add more motion to the shake effect in the edit window. If I add a keyframe on size and then shrink it down, over the course of this clip, I can bring it back up to full size and it will continue shaking as it scales up. So you can enable shake in the edit page, but you cannot control the shake modifier in the edit page. For that, you need to go into Fusion and that can be really intimidating if you're just getting started. So let's look at a way to get those same shake modifier controls in the edit page. If you wanna create a preset, this is what you do. In your effects library, you need to go to effects, fusion composition and drag that to your timeline. Then you need to select that fusion composition, open the fusion window, and you will see your single media out node. You can add a text plus node by selecting shift space to open this prompt, then typing in text. And then when you click text plus add, that will add a text node and you can connect the output of that text node to that media out node and that will give you this general timeline in the viewer. In the text you can type in whatever you want and then this inspector will be the exact same text plus inspector that you were working in earlier. So we can navigate to that rotation on the z-axis, right click and go to modify with shake. Then we can open up that modifier, recreate that look we liked. And then if we select that entire node tree, which in this instance is just two nodes, we can right click and go to macro, create macro. And that will open up this very intimidating window at first. What this window does is show you every option that you have control over back in your inspector. So if we navigate to that text node under text, we see these options that mirror what we see here, text, font, color. So I'm going to check these boxes to enable export on these parameters down to tracking. Then I'm going to navigate down to common and enable control for motion blur. And then I'm going to open up this shake parameter control and check these boxes again to enable export for those same sets of controls we were working on here in the modifier tab. Then when we select close, It'll ask us if we want to save, we can click yes. And you can save that wherever you want. I'm just going to save to the desktop and you need to completely close DaVinci Resolve. And there you will see the setting file that you created with that macro save. To get this preset into the edit page, you need to drag it to a very specific place in the program files for DaVinci Resolve. I will have that specific file path, both for Mac and Windows in the description. Once you open this templates folder, you want to open edit for the edit page and then titles. And then you can either drag and drop that preset you created or copy and paste it. I'm going to copy and then paste. Then when we open Resolve back up, we can go to the effects library, titles, fusion titles, 
And if we scroll down, we will see that preset that we added to that specific folder. And if we drag that onto the timeline, you will see that same macro we made. And in the inspector, in the edit page, you will see those text parameters we selected. And if you scroll down, you will see those same controls for that shake modifier here in the inspector in the edit page. So here we can change the text. And then here we can change those settings to make that motion smooth again. So by creating this preset, we have completely eliminated the need to open the fusion page. You don't need to mess with node graphs. You don't need to mess with any of the more advanced or confusing parts of the fusion page. I know I flew through how to create some of those presets yourself, but I feel better about that because I'm going to be giving away a pack of these presets for you to use in your own videos. This pack will be a few different presets that you can use on the edit page that will have this shake parameter enabled on a few key controls. I would love for you to check them out, drop them in your projects. If you use them in any videos, I would really love to see that. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Drop a like if you found this video useful and please subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks, I'll see you next time.